So, climbing is something I've always done a bit of throughout my life, especially with the Scouts. I've been a member of them since I was six. Um, and it's always been something I wanted to do a bit more seriously, get into a bit more. And when I started at university, it was a really good opportunity to join the Mountaineering Club and, you know, take it a bit more seriously, step it up a gear. Uh, I think climbing's always appealed to me because it's a good mixture of a physical sport you know, the actual act of getting yourself up that wall. But there's also a mental aspect to it, you know, of actually using your mind to overcome these problems. Ross was always very determined, very positive, very feisty. Uh, quite funny, um, always had a, a quiet inner strength and a determination um, to succeed. He threw himself into lots of different things, he, everything he saw he wanted to have a go at and would always have a, a good try at it. He wanted to be a doctor from a very young age for example, he decided when he was about 10 that that was what he was going to do and he stuck through that throughout the rest of his childhood and into adulthood. He's always been fun to be with, um, you know, he's always got a quiet sense of humour, but a quiet determination and strength about him. So I was going down to Sunderland with the Mountaineering Club before one of our weekly meets. Uh, I was just doing a, you know, just a standard warm-up climb on the wall, nothing too strenuous. And I was just coming out of an overhang at the top of the wall and then through circumstances that are out of my control, I slipped and I continued to fall. The next thing I knew, I was falling. All I could hear was the sound of the rope whizzing through the hook. It was very fast, but it was also very slow at the same time. I didn't really know what was happening. All I remember was thinking that something had gone wrong and something wasn't right. And before I knew it, I heard this big crack as I hit the bottom of the floor. And that was the last time I would ever feel my legs. I remember saying, you know, a couple of days after the surgery, you know, it is okay to be angry, you know, you, 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 that's fine. And he said, what, what's the point? It won't change anything. There's no point in being angry. He even said, you know, it could have been worse. It would have been higher up my spine and I wouldn't have used my arms. I might not be able to breathe properly. I'll take this if you like. You know, that's... Um, if, if that's the best I'm going to get, I'll go with that. You know, I can st I've still got my brain, I've still got my character, I've still got my arms. I'm just going to get on with it. So I found out about Ross's accident via text when he just texting me, you know, I'm in hospital. Um, it was, I mean, I think the first message he actually sent was whoopsie and a picture of him in the ambulance with his head brace on. And we all thought it was a joke. But it was after the second or third message that he said, no, sir, I am in hospital and I can't feel my legs. But there was the hope that he'd be able to have, you know, the feeling had returned to his legs eventually. So I wasn't too disheartened. And then the real realisation sort of hit that he wasn't going to walk again, but well, whilst you might have thought that I'd be sad or downbeat about it, it wasn't as crushing as I thought it could be because I know Ross and I know he's determined and I knew that despite having a fractured spine, not being able to walk, he'd still be able to achieve the goals he'd set himself a decade ago. So this is my car um, over the steering wheel here. There's a ring and I push that in and that's in place of the accelerator. Just down to the right here, there's a lever which connects to the brake pedal. I push that in and it will brake for me. So this is my automatic door, which leads us into my room where I live while I'm at uni. As you can see, nice and spacious, twice as big as the regular room, so make my flatmates nice and jealous. Uh, I've got my profile in bed here, which goes up and down get into nice comfy positions in there. Over here, we've got my desk with laptop, printer, all set out for me. I've got a nice chair there, which I use when I'm sitting at my desk for long periods of time. An excessive amount of mugs for tea and coffee. 
and since I'm a student, a nice stash of alcohol as well. And if we go back over here, we've well, got the bathroom. Again, nice and spacious. The chairs to sit down on while I'm in the shower. And yeah, that's my room. As part of my rehabilitation, um, one week they got a local wheelchair rugby team out. They let us all have a go, and it was something I really enjoyed. And they offered me the chance when I got back up to Newcastle uh, to go back to uni in the, in the following autumn to join a team, and I was definitely up for that. So from September, I've been going every week, uh, two hours training session, and it's brilliant. I, I really enjoy it. It can be quite hard to get enough exercise, like being in the wheelchair. Um, and the wheelchair rugby is a great way to get around that. It's fun, it's sociable, and it's a really good bit of exercise. When I joined the wheelchair rugby team, quite a few of them mentioned that they go to this gym down in Gateshead that specialises for people in wheelchairs, and that was something that really interested me. So a few months ago, I finally got around to going down and sorting out membership. So I've been having uh, a training sessions a couple of times a week with a personal trainer. Dig deep, dig deep, come on, you know there, you know there, you know there. Two ten, that's cool, that's cool. It's really helped, even just after a few weeks, I could immediately notice the difference, just things like getting up hills a bit easier, transfers not being as strenuous and it's it's been really good it has helped me i mean ross has always been an active person we've hiked the alps um together and across we've trekked across spain so seeing that he's going back into the gym and trying new sports like wheelchair rugby is absolutely phenomenal um i knew that he wanted to be active whilst at university even prior to the fall and the fact that there are so many facilities open to him, like the gym and the wheelchair rugby team that's taking him around the country, they're phenomenal opportunities and he's really being able to carry on his development, both academically at the university and socially through the sports. Um, and I, th I think it's brilliant. The wheelchair rugby and the gym have been great steps in my journey to getting my independence back but there's been one goal I've had in mind all this time. And that's to go climbing again. I've got in touch with a trust in Cumbria and they said they'd be willing to help me achieve this target and I'm really looking forward to it. Climbing's always been a passion of mine and there's no reason why being in a wheelchair uh, should affect that in any way. So this will be the first time since my accident I'm gonna be trying to climb again. I am a little bit nervous, but mainly excited. Excited that I'm going to be able to achieve my dream of climbing independently again. Some people might think that because of my disability, I won't be able to reach the same standards and goals that I would have been able to before my accident, and I want to prove those people wrong. That's it. I want to prove that anything is possible, anything is achievable if you put your mind to it. To a large extent, it's not the wheelchair that stops people, it's that mental attitude. I want to show that you don't always have to feel sorry for yourself. If you have a dream, chase it and you never know what's going to happen. We've only got one life given to us, so I might as well make the most of what I've got. I mean, even before the accident, it's always given me uh, many, many occasions to be proud of him, you know. You, school life to his music, um, every, you know, his scouting achievements, uh, but obviously this knocks everything into a cocked hat really, um, just <laughs> proud beyond words of, of his attitude, his strength, his determination to get on with life and to succeed.
um, the way that he's taken up his climbing again, yeah. <laughs> Obviously a bit of trepidation, but yeah, but, you know, it's um, great to see that he's going to carry on doing the things he's enjoyed doing. Um, and the wheelchair's not going to stop him. He's taken up wheelchair rugby, he's thrown himself into that, literally, I think. Um, and that's... It's hard to put it into words. Just, just pride in what he's achieved and what he's going to carry on and achieve. I'm incredibly proud of what Ross has achieved over the last 12 months. He's come so far. I mean, he's learned a whole new way of how to drive. He's worked out how to take apart and put back together a wheelchair in record time. Um, he's got back onto his university career. Nothing's going to stop him in his path to becoming a doctor. And there was always that friendly bit of rivalry between Ross and myself um, through school and through high school um, and now at university. So I'm really pleased that he's back on the road to becoming a doctor. Yeah. So he's trying out new sports and he's getting back into the sports he loved. You know, nothing stopped him from getting the goals that he wants to achieve. Which, to me, just goes to show what a, what a brilliant person um, Ross is and how he can achieve what everyone else would have regarded as the impossible.